me. So you really learned this, though, from the ground up. It's oh, yeah. not like you just walked into no, some major no, position. No, no, no. I mean, I was and, incredibly I mean, lucky really... that my dad was able to open doors for me. Right. But I did well, you know? Yeah. I mean, there was one day we had, it was when the Led Zeppelin album Physical Graffiti came out. Oh, what a great album. Mm. So we had 250,000 records come in the door one morning. Okay? Okay. And we, we being all of us, or probably like 30 of us, had to break them down and ship them out by the end of the day. Are you <laughs> Yeah, kidding? and that's what we did. We, all over the world or No, country? it was just, we were the L.A. branch. So it was okay. the San Diego, Phoenix, you know. Wow. Yeah, the whole lower quadrant. As and, it were. and so, like, who organized this whole thing and got it all orchestrated? Well, the you know the Atlantic salesmen were the guys who put the sales orders through, right? And we just had to fill the orders, right? You know? That is amazing. Yeah. So you really did it from the yeah. ground up. I mean, and you really then, did. Yeah, and then I got a job at a recording studio, and that's when I went to my parents and said, "Okay, I'm out of school," because you know my first my first day at the studio, I was a tape operator, and I got there at ten in the morning. And the first thing it said was, here, roll some pot. So I'm rolling some weed. By 1030, I am wasted, okay? <laughs> Absolutely wasted right. on this weed that these musicians brought in that was just killer. <laughs> and then, so it was like, okay, you either got to function stoned or you can't be in the business. So right. I started to function really well being stoned. And I, I, w I worked from 10 until midnight. And I went home and I said, okay, Mom, I'm not going to school anymore. And they were like, okay, you got a job. You're in a recording studio. They didn't know my job was rolling weed and oh. hooking up microphones, but that was my job. For yeah. how long? I did that for about a year. Okay. And then I got the bug that I had to move to New York. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing you got any kind of bug smoking that kind of pot. Oh yeah. I, I mean, because well, usually pot every people are like twenty six years out right. of it. But I just, wow. I just, I, I was motivated. And what happened was I got into, um, got seriously into punk rock. Right. Okay. Seriously. Into okay, tell rap. me what that means. Like, uh, it was the summer. Sex Pistols. Yeah, Sex Pistols, The Clash, The Damned, uh, Talking Heads, Ramones, that oh. whole crew. Got seriously into that, and all my friends in LA thought I was insane. You know, they're listening to ELO and ELP and Styx and Journey, and I'm listening to The Clash, and I'm wearing straight leg jeans, and I cut my hair, and they think I'm insane. You're still doing it. Yeah. You've got straight leg jeans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, they think I'm crazy. And How'd you discover punk rock? Just, I was, I was always looking for something new. I was always the kid in high school who, they were, my friends would all come over to my house and I would turn everybody on to music way early. I mean, I was into Bowie way before Ziggy Stardust. I was into wow. Bob Marley before anybody. I was always in, I was into Bruce Springsteen before Born to Run. So it's always into things before they broke. So I was always that guy. So I, I heard about this punk rock stuff, and, you know, I got into Patti Smith and television, oh, yeah. you know, all the early stuff, you know, and the Ramones and Blondie, mm -hmm. and I just got way in, and then my parents sent me to New York for my 20th birthday to stay at my cousin's house in the village, mm -hmm. and I was supposed to stay a week. I stayed for three. I didn't even call them for a week. They thought I was dead, Right. and I called and said, this is the greatest place in the world. I'm staying longer, so they were, they were fine, and I went to CBGB's. Oh, what a great... And that was it. That was it for I you. I was like, okay, I'm moving yeah. here. This yeah. is a city full of people I can relate to and a club that's just the greatest. So I go back to L.A. and I tell my parents, okay, I'm moving to New York. And they're like, okay, you can move to New York, but you need a job. And you're like, not a problem. Yeah, it's like, not a problem. <laughs> job, and like not if a it's, problem. And if it's like, like a cartoon thing, the, the bubble with the you, you need a job is still hanging here. And two days later, I meet Seymour Stein who is the head of Sire Records. Right. And at the time, Sire Records was the preeminent punk rock label in America. They had right. the Talking Heads, the Ramones, the Dead Boys, Richard Hell, the Saints. They, they were the label. Right. So I, I met Seymour at a party, and we just hit it Did off. Did you know who he was when you met him? I knew who Sire Records was. Okay. And then I was told this is Seymour Stein, so I just glommed on to him. And he had just done a deal with Warner's, where Warner's was going to be help with the distribution and marketing of his records. So I wanted to be friends with him, and he wanted to be friends with me because my dad was big shot over at Warner's. Right. So he saw it. You know, an in, and I saw an in with him. So it was mutually, you know, in. It was in. So he was in L.A. for like two weeks. We went out every night, 
And actually, during that period of time, I saw Devo's first ever show in Los Angeles. Wow, yeah, what was that like? They were playing some, like, place that wasn't even a venue. It was just like some empty loft area somewhere in some weird part of town. And there were maybe like 20 or 30 people there. And it was really great. Oh, my. Yeah. So I just hung with Seymour, and um, he left town, and I wrote him a letter. This is, these are the days of writing letters. So I right. wrote him a letter saying, Seymour, I'd love to you know, work for you. I'll do anything. Just save me, you know? Yeah. So he called me back like a week later and said, I'm going to be in town in two weeks. Let's get together. So we got together, and he offered me a job. He said, I can be a messenger boy. So I moved to New York, and I was a messenger boy for Cyrus.